what is the overview of this presentation, what you're going to learn here. So the very first part of it is going to be is what is LTE? We will cover what does it mean? Of course, we've been using this acronym and I'm, I uh, am thankful for your patience that you haven't gotten up and said, what the heck is he talking about? And we'll, we'll go into that. What were the goals of the LTE system? Um, then we look at the LTE architecture and a bit about the standards process and how the specifications, how you can get to the right specifications to, to, to delve a uh, level deeper into LTE. So what is LTE? Uh, LTE stands for long-term evolution. I guess most of you knew that, uh, but still it's a term that can be applied as much to radio technology to human evolution. And you must be like, huh? And if you're a native Turkish speaker, you will say, Bune ya? which means what the heck is it? So then you of course will do some Google searching and you will go in and do uh, look at a video that that is the link provided here. Burju Hanum will tell you what 4.5G is and this is an internal joke in Turkey. Um, and at the end you'll find out and as Burju Hanum typically does, you'll she'll get to the gist of it and LTE means Daha Hizli Internet much faster internet. That's exactly what LTE is all about, is to get you a much faster internet connection. But then let's look a little bit more about the technical details about what uh, the main requirements for LTE were and when LTE was being specified the main idea was to try to get the speeds much higher and downlink up to 100 megabits per second and uplink 50 megabits per second. Downlink is always more important. The bandwidth is important. We are looking at 20 megahertz spectrum over here. The other requirement was that the idle, what's called the idle to active transition. So that's when your phone's dead, you pick up your phone, you want to go to YouTube. That time should be less than 100 milliseconds. And this was critical because in 3G technologies, it used to take much longer for you to go from idle to, to getting to the website right away. The third critical thing for LTE to keep in mind is that the, the specification allowed for a large variety of bandwidths. So you could go anywhere from 1.25 megahertz bandwidth to 20 megahertz because different parts of the world provide different bandwidths for LTE to operators and an operator is not always able to get 20 megahertz in a region. But most of the time when we'll be talking in this lecture series, we will be assuming that you have 20 megahertz uh, bandwidth to play with. So given all of this, what is the LTE and LTE Advanced Max Downlink throughputs? And here uh, the, the source of the material is from LTE in bullets. It's an excellent uh, reference if you're looking for learning about LTE. It's a little bit more radio related, uh, but still gives you a good overview of LTE. Um, if you look at the configuration, we kind of take a look at the theoretical throughput which is the very maximum you can do. And this is what your typical application layer throughput is going to be. So for an LTE system, it all depends upon what configuration you're using. If you have four by four MIMO, what's called, so if your cell phone has four antennas and your base station has four antennas, you will get a maximum of 150 megabits per second application. Does your phone have four antennas? No, your phone has two antennas. Well, the speed comes down. But when we look at uh, theoretical speeds, they're talked about with the configuration that uh, that is best for the system. If you've got eight antennas and you're doing eight by eight MIMO, you're up to 300 megabits per second. Now, this is all for 20 megahertz. Now, if you go to LTE Advanced, which allows you to do something called carrier aggregation, so you can end up with either 40 megahertz bandwidth or 100 megahertz bandwidth, you have five carriers which are aggregated, each one is 20 megahertz, you can end up up to 1.5 gigabits per second. Man, that's sizzling. What are you going to do with that? Hey, I don't know, but that's what LTE Advanced can give you if your operator has got 100 megahertz spectrum that he can put together and your phone's able to, to handle that also. So 
what you're really getting. And then you go to the web and you search from open signal kind of tells you that if you're in Korea, you can be getting up to anywhere up to 35 to 40 megabits per second. And if you're in Singapore, somewhere in that range. Uh, but if you're somewhere else in most of the other parts of the world, you're going to be getting somewhere in the 5 to 10 megabits per second. Hey, but that's also pretty good for downloading your movie that you want to watch or downloading the file to uh, to learn more about what LTE is. Um, LTE is deployed in large parts of the world. You can see most of it is red. Most of these countries have already deployed LTE. So it's a technology that has got widespread deployment. So now let's look a little bit about the history about how LTE came about, uh, starting from what's called 2G. So in 1991, 2G or it's called GSM, Global System for Mobile Communications, came out and it was a revolution at that time. It used 200 megahertz of, or 200, sorry, 200 kilohertz of bandwidth and, and was mostly for voice. Then somewhere in the middle in 95, this data stuff was coming along and that got added in 95, which was called the packet switch domain. So the packet switch is the data part of it and it's also called GPRS which is this general packets radio service. So that was the core architecture. You typically haven't heard about it if you didn't look at the architecture portions or more technical details. That still gave you very low bandwidth. Then in 2002 what came out to the market was called UMTS which was this 5 megahertz bandwidth. Now you're going from 200 kilohertz bandwidth to 5 megahertz bandwidth, but it's giving you a data rate of 2 megabits per second. I mean, this is sizzling, man. So, um, and but then in the middle, uh, there were further advancements in UMTS itself, in which case you could do something, uh, use two 5 megahertz together, and that technology was called HSPA, and it, give, and it could give you 14.4 megahertz, megabits per second in this 10 megahertz bandwidth. And HSPA is high speed packet access, and that, came, that was deployed in 2008. And in the meantime, we were working on LTE, and the very first deployment of LTE was close to in the 2010 time frame, and we went from from 10 megahertz to 20 megahertz bandwidth, but we also got 150 mega, megabits per second data rate. And what came out in deployments in 2012 is called LTE Advanced, which allows you to do carrier aggregation. And then with 40 megahertz, two carriers aggregated, you can go up to 300 megabits per second. LTE also used the tech two new technologies we went from something which was called code division multiple access which could work in 5 to 10 megahertz but this technology doesn't work very well when your bandwidths your bandwidths go up to 20 megahertz and, and a new technology was needed which is called OFDM and also the idea that also the concept that multiple transmit and multiple receive antennas were being used to get to these high data rates that you're that you're seeing. Um, of course, if you want to learn more about these, you probably need to look at a radio level course on this 